I'm John Findlay. I came to uh, UNB in September of 1955 on a Beebrook scholarship. Uh, in that year, uh, the Beebrook Foundation, or Lord Beebrook, had established a series of scholarships. Um, there were some graduate scholarships in forestry coming from Great Britain, uh, but he also established a scheme of uh, scholarships. And there were three or four the first year uh, that brought students from the British Isles to various Canadian universities, including, of course, UNB. And um, those scholarships were limited, in a way, to the sons and daughters of newspaper employees of Great Britain. It could be any, any newspaper, a national or a small paper, or whatever. And uh, I was fortunate in the sense my father, after spending several years in the war overseas and everything, resumed his journalistic career in Fleet Street and encouraged me to apply for this in 1955. Uh, lo and behold, in June of that year, I got a letter signed by Lord Beebrook saying that I was successful in that and I would be coming to UNB. I had, in fact, we've been actually begin a choice of universities to go to, and I put McGill down because the one I, knew, I had heard about, and uh, I put that down as my first choice. And uh, nevertheless, uh, Beaver, in his wisdom, decided I should go to UNB. And so I did, and I was glad of that. I think particularly because I, I uh, opted to take a chemistry degree, and uh, the powers that be had informed Dr. Le Dr. Sorry, the powers that be had um, informed Lord Beaverbrook that uh, UNB was an excellent place to do chemistry at the time. And indeed it was, because of the outstanding uh, scholar Carl Wiesner was here, although he wasn't, uh, I didn't really get to know him that well until I was a graduate student here. Anyway, I got that letter, and of course, uh, uh, together with another Beaverbrook scholar, Stephen Fay, uh, arrived at UNB in the fall of 55. And we were met at the station by Chet Mahan, bursar of the day, and uh, the dean of residences. Well, actually, it was only one residence at the time, the LBR. And I spent my three years as an undergraduate uh, studying for the bachelor's degree in chemistry in LBR. In the uh, fall of 1956, that's one year into the program, so to speak, um, in October, uh, I don't know, we got a phone call, but somebody came and informed me and a few other of the overseas Beaverbrook scholars that we were, had to assemble immediately or very quickly down at Somerville House because the Beaver wanted to meet us, see us there. And uh, at that time, I believe there would have been Stephen Fay, myself, uh, Peter Pierce, uh, Bob Day, and one or two other forestry students. And um, uh, anyway, what happened was we were greeted by uh, Lord B. Brook and uh, shown in. It was uh, just uh, five or six of us in total, plus Lord B. Brook. And we had an excellent meal with him and discussing the affairs of the day. And he, and he was a very gracious host and very generous. And um, we enjoyed that very much, especially meeting the man firsthand who had supplied us with the the wherewithal to, to come to UNB. And uh, that was the first time I met him. And um, the second time, I think, was probably in the year when I graduated in 1958. And um, my, my roommate, Nick Teller, and I had been invited by uh, Bev McCauley, who was a business manager, to have a meal at his home at one particular evening. And um, We'd had a drink or so, and uh, I could smell the chicken getting ready in the kitchen, and wasn't there a call from Colin B. asking if I would come immediately to Somerville House because Lord Beaverbrook wanted to catch up with us again. And uh, so I had to leave this nice dinner <laughs> and make my apologies to Bev McCauley, but he understood the situation. He'd been here on the campus for quite a few years and knew what uh, had to be done if the beaver called. So um, I proceeded down to uh, Somerville House with considerable haste, expecting perhaps to have my meal down there. As it turned out, um, uh, drinks and conversation were the subject of the, of the evening. It was just a 
fairly short meeting in, in the sense that we didn't stay on and have uh, dinner and so on. And of course, by this time, there were more Beaverbrook scholars. So we're, we were a group of probably 10 or 12 between forestry students and undergraduate students who had come to, uh, in, in subsequent years, like 55, 56, and 57. Barry Yule would be one of the under, other undergraduates pr uh, present, and, and John Drew, of course, from the year before. Anyway, we were standing around and uh, various bits of small talk at the beginning, and the beaver broke in with a loud voice and said, and addressed us each in turn. He said, what do you know of Cruden's Concordance? And uh, I think I wasn't the first, but I was one among the, the group of eight or ten who shook their head and apologized and said, we didn't know anything about Cruden or his Concordance. Or, and uh, after sort of shaking his head, <laughs> sort of amusingly and sadly, um, he walked over to one side table in the room, which supported a large volume, leather-bound volume, and uh, opened this up and showed it to us. And this was, of course, uh, a book which contains various uh, words in the Bible and shows and correlates where they're quoted in different sentences and so on. So it's a, uh, an assist to reading the Bible. And, uh, of course, he having had a father who's a minister, <laughs> must have known Cruden's Concordance and been brought up on it. But anyway, our, our group, sadly, were, were not knowledgeable on that area. Anyway, um, the other thing that happened after is I asked us, quizzed us on that, uh, there were um, some soft drinks over on another table and one bottle of rum. And um, he went around each one of us and asked us what we would like to drink and one, two, three, four... And we all chose the rum. And uh, I think we only had one rum, although I, I met Bob Day just a few minutes ago down at the Playhouse, uh, just after the film, and he, he, he suggested that it was more than uh, one rum or one drink and that we all also used, had cigars. But I, I don't remember that part, but he may be able to fill in in that detail. Anyway. Um, so we had that first episode to do with the uh, lack of knowledge on Cruden's Concordance, and then there was a second uh, notable event that we all decided to drink rum. A anyway, we parted in good company, had a pleasant conversation, shook our hands and said, I I'd like to keep up with you boys, so I watch your progress in this, that and the other. We parted. And Strangely enough, um, in the year following that, the, there were no more scholarships from Britain to, to Canada. Um, I don't think one has to put two and two together. It may have been just a, a decision at another level, but they actually ceased to list, uh, exist following that event or following that, that year. So um, one thing I'd like to add is that uh, when I received that letter, personally signed by Lord Beaverbrook in June of 1955, he said at the end, um, I shall watch your progress with interest. And uh, he was true to that, uh, not only because of these two gatherings, but um, on two occasions he wrote my father after him having been over here or him having some, read something in the Gleaner. And uh, very complimentary letters to do with my progress and, and things that were happening here. And uh, I found it quite remarkable, this man who has, is so busy meeting with heads of states, running newspapers, coming across to Canada and doing various things as chancellor, would have the time to write me, my father, a letter about me. And um, uh, one of the letters was from Charkley, and the other was from um, his s south of France uh, Stab, uh, where he stays there, so I think it's Cap Dai, uh, La Caponcina is the name of his house there. And uh, that was the, um, the address that he had on, on, on that second letter. Uh, uh, another as one thing in, I can add to this, and you can decide whether to use it or not, is that um, living in LBR, um, 
I met up with quite a number of students. There were fellow Beaverbrook overseas students in there. One of them was John Drew. John Drew paid us a visit this summer. He was in uh, St. Andrews and St. John, and he came around. And he brought me a little slip of paper to remind me about something that had been written way back in the middle 50s in LBR, sort of in praise of Lord Beaverbrook. And it's called The Lord's Prayer. And uh, if you like, I could read that to you. It says follows. Our Father, who art in Nassau, hallowed be thy fame, thy business boom, thy will be done in Fredericton as it is in Fleet Street. Give us this year our annual grant and condemn us for our liquor laws as we condemn those that imposed them against us. Lead us not into inflation and deliver us from poverty. For thine is the province, the towns and the people, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and that's my story. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> well, was I, I, I was hesitant about that, but after seeing the movie downtown and all, all the other aspects of Lord Beaverbrook, I don't think... <laughs> I think this is. Uh, the calm. <laughs> it's not taking anything away from it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that may or may not be the original version, but uh, John sort of pieced it together. For, John Drew helped to piece it together there. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we pretty much got it. But is there any? Can you give any insight or sense to what what it was like when? Beaverbrook came to campus. Uh. Well, certainly, you know, somehow his presence was felt, even though you weren't sort of looking and watching him. The fact that he was here, you knew, knew that Colin B. was very busy because he had to show him around and whatever, uh, whenever the beaver barked, uh, it had to be responded to. Um, uh, there certainly was a feeling, because the campus is relatively small at that time, and there were 12 when I came, there was 1,200 students. And Colin B., of course, knew all the students by the, their name. That's, that's, that is a fact. He really did. And so uh, when things, when the beaver was around, uh, things were a little bit different. Uh, it was a, lo a lot more fun uh, in certain ways for, for the people that had a little bit of a connection with him. And we, as I uh, relate to you, there were two events down there. There were other events that I wouldn't necessarily know about, but... Uh, it was certainly a, a different time when he was here. <laughs>